So what was Christmas like for you growing up? Did you have um, a big Christmas tree and ornaments and what, what kind of, what did it look like? No, we didn't have any trees. The trees don't grow very uh, plentiful in, in England and wood is very expensive. And of course plastics hadn't been invented in those days so there was no artificial uh, Christmas trees. So we just didn't have one. So uh, we were, when we came down in the morning there would be two or three toys for each, uh, uh, myself and my brother. So two or three corner. toys? Two or three toys. In the corner? In the corner and, and that was no tree. The reason there was only two or three toys is toys were expensive in those days. Toys didn't come down in price until plastics were invented and that wasn't until the 1950s when they became plentiful. So one of my hobbies was toy soldiers and they were made of lead and they were hand painted. So they were very expensive. So for Christmas I would get a set of a, a, a box with eight in it. It would be one particular regiment. Oh, okay. With a sergeant major and an officer and four or five men. And of course, I, at one Christmas I, I actually got a wooden fort. And so I would play with the fort and the soldiers. Did you have two different regiments? Yeah, oh yeah. So yeah. Well, I had a collection so I could put some on the fort and some on. So what, like, you, what distinguished the regiment? The colors? The, or? Yeah, the way they were painted. Okay. The, the, the colors would be different for the different regiments. But it's still, was it all the British Army? No, uh, sometimes uh, you, you could get foreign, you could get German and French as oh, well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I guess it would have been hand painted, of course, in those right. days. That's right, but I didn't have masses of them. I remember when my youngest boy, one Christmas, I bought him uh, G.I. Joes and 50 of them in a bag for a very modest price. And I thought when I bought them, boy, I would have loved that as a boy because the lead soldiers were very expensive. And of course, they were fairly fragile, you know, if you dropped them oh. and a leg or a head would fall off. Oh. If a head fell off, you could a matchstick push it in and push the head down on the matchstick and then the matchstick would connect the head with, oh, the, with okay. the body. Oh, you know, so it's it's lead like pencil yeah, was, lead, yeah, like it, soft? It, it was hollow. They were oh, hollow. it was hollow. Oh, okay. Yeah, they made a lead, they were hollow. Hmm. So, anyway, that was Christmas. Now, the turkey, uh, we would go down to the market at night, uh, usually I think, it, I'm not sure if it was Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve. But if we were going down at night to the market. The market was all, all uh, canvas covers and that. And they had these uh, flares, gas flares up to light. And the turkeys were all dressed, not dressed, they were, all had their feathers on. Oh. And they were hung up by their nets, and you went along and said, I'll take that one, he'd lift it down. They were hung by their necks. Yeah. Did they have their head on there too? Yeah. So then you have to go back, chop the head off, and take the feathers off. Now, the way you took the feathers off, you sat in the chair in the, in the uh, kitchen and put newspapers there all around you to take the feathers. So did you have the bird sitting on your lap? Yep, sitting on your lap. Yeah, you have a bit of a cloth on so you don't okay. get your trousers dirty. And then once you got all the feathers off, then you, you had to, to get a, a taper. It's usually a taper because a match goes out too quickly. You usually get a taper and you, where you take the feathers out, you, there's little bits left in there, so you have to singe them off. What's a taper? It's like a long, thin candle. Oh, okay. okay. Long, thin candle. And uh, singe them all off. So it was quite a performance, you know. And then... Like when we buy a turkey, it's kind of I know. been cleaned and gutted and everything, oh, right? You had to gut it all yourself and everything, yeah, yeah. And then um, did you have the traditional stuffing and potatoes? Yes, we did. We had yeah. traditional stuffing and Christmas pudding. But I guess you didn't have cranberry sauce, right? No, we didn't Because you wouldn't have grown cranberries. No, there. I didn't. 
have cranberries, or at least they weren't grown in England at that time. So, of course, they would have to be imported from North America, which would be too expensive to sell. So we'd never heard of cranberries. Right. And then what else would you have, like basic vegetables and potatoes? Yeah, just vegetables and stuff like that. And then um, what did you have? You said you had a Christmas pudding? Yeah, Christmas pudding was a traditional, and that was made with liquor, and it always had a, a sixpence inside. Oh, okay. And whoever got the sixpence, oh boy, that's great. Wow. That was money in your pocket. Because <laughs> that would be worth two movie, yeah. two time, like two or three yeah, times going to the yeah, movies. Yeah, probably about three or four dollars today. You wow. Know, yeah. But uh, the other thing too is uh, they would pour brandy over the top and light it. Oh, okay. So it would call a flame. Ah. Yeah, so it was so a bit of a celebration, right? It. So, uh, and we'd have custard with it. Okay. So that was basically our Christmas. Well, the other thing about the toys is because there were no plastics, most of the toys, like the trucks and that, were all made of metal. That's why they were so expensive. Mm. But of course, uh, being metal, uh, they weren't like the soldiers. They were very robust. So it wasn't too much. They could take a lot of wear and tear. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, but they were heavy, of course, too. And of course, because it wasn't done with mould, they all had to be put together by hand, I suppose. That's why they were so expensive. Right. And then, did you have Santa Claus or Father Christmas? Not really. No? Nope. No, there was no taking your kids to see Santa. I think that they had a parade with a Santa Claus in it. That's about the, and they might have a, a stuffed one in the, in the in the department store, I don't know. Right. And what about Christmas cards? Did people do Christmas cards yes, back I then? Yes, did. And do you remember, did you get lots of them? Because people didn't have the same connectivity that they That's have today, right? right? Yeah. So. Well, tr yeah, like, people didn't have cars. So your transport was basically buses and trains. Okay. Now in England, in the working classes, uh, cars did not become uh, plentiful until about 1970. Oh, really? Yeah, because England was a poor country. And, Oh, that's interesting. Mm. So, so people didn't really see each other that much. Like, if well, you had moved away from home, for example, uh, yeah. you know, you wouldn't be probably seeing your your family that often. Well, the, the public transport was very, very good. The trains were excellent, and so were the buses because people relied on them, mm -hmm. and they've inherited that today. You go to London and they've got all kinds of fast transport that was put up in the 1800s. The mm -hmm. underground was put up about 18, I think about 1880, somewhere like that. It's very, very old, but it's very, very good. Right. It's excellent. It gets you anywhere in no time flat. So transportation was, was good. So the house that you kind of grew up in, where was that located? That was in Portsmouth. That was Portsmouth, Portsmouth is on the south coast of England. And it was the, a huge naval base. It was the largest naval base in, Britain, in uh, the, 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 what was then the British Empire. Okay. And of course, that was important because your dad was in the Navy. Well, my dad was in the Navy, and of course, that's why we were in Portsmouth. Not only my, my dad, but my four f f bears were in the Navy too. So that's why we were a naval family. Oh, okay. And that's why we lived in Portsmouth. Oh, so then... Um Ted's dad was also in the Navy? Well, it was more his uncles and that. His, okay. his actual dad was in the, um, was in the cavalry, in oh. the army. Oh. Yeah. Did he, was he living in Portsmouth? Do you know? No, he wasn't. He, he, my dad grew up in, in, in London, actually. Oh, okay. But it's my, on my mother's side that, uh, there was a lot of people in the Navy. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then what was your dad's job in the Navy? Well, my d dad was a telegraphist. 
which means that he had the radio, he was in charge of the, or not in charge, but he was on the, the radio end of the, of, of the battleship where they took in messages. Because in those days, uh, they didn't have a lot of mass communications like they do today. They had Morse codes, and that was the only way there was no voice as such. The voice didn't come along until after the war, you know, a mm. long time after the war. So uh, he joined up in 1917. In 1917? 17, yeah. And so did you say he was working on the battleships? Well, I should go back a little bit. When my, my dad left school at 14, which was about everybody, even I left when I went, most kids left school at 14, and then he went into service to uh, rich people who had a gardener, and he became the gardener's boy. Okay. And. Uh, he always says that his good health started from there because he said downstairs, it was upstairs and downstairs, <laughs> downstairs ate the same meal as the ones up. Okay. And in those days, you know, people were not very, you know, working class people weren't very well fed, but he was. Okay. But as the war progressed, because it started in 1914 when my dad got went in. And, and in what year was your dad born? 1900. Okay. So in 1914, when the war started, he went into service uh, oh. with, this, uh, with this couple. Okay, yeah. And, uh, but uh, then in 1916, the, this, this couple had a horse and carriage. And in those days, uh, there was a guy that steered the horses and at the back there was a man that stood up at the back. If you look at the, the Queen going to the coronation you'll see these people, they call them postillions. Okay. So anyway, he was called in one day in 1916 to, the, to his, uh, his governor as it was and uh, he, said the, uh, he said the postillion has volunteered to go in the army so we haven't got a postillion and we want you to be a postillion. They said I was promoted from gardener's boy to postillion. They sent him to a tailor to get the uniform. Oh, nice. And uh, the, towards the end of his life, back in the late 70s and 80s, it was his boast he was probably the last person in England that made his living as a postillion. <laughs> But of course, when he was 17, he was able to join up, and then, then, and then he left there. Oh, so he did that for about a year, I guess? Yeah, about a year. That would be a lot better than uh, being gardener's a gardener's boy. boy. Yeah, that's but right. did, I guess they had to clean up after the horses, too? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that was the main function. That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the thing uh, when I was growing up, uh, like the milkman and other, and the, the people that delivered the coal did it with horse and carts. And of course, every now and again, the horse has to go. So <laughs> everyone would rush out in the street with a pail and a, and a shovel because the, it made excellent manure for the, for the Oh, gardens. so they wanted it for the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wanted it. Oh, because yeah. you're probably growing vegetables <laughs> as a food that's source, right. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. You run in, say, you run, say Mom! There's a manure on the streets. Oh, okay. Now she go. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we used to get the milk delivered by the milkman, and he had one of these carts that were like, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, what the Romans say? Chariot. And, uh, it was like a horseshoe. It was round, and the, all the bottles were on, on that, and he stood up at the back. Really? And I would go at the end of the road, and I'd say, can I ride on your cart? And I could stand next to him on there. And that was a big thrill. Because to be in something that was moving on wheels <laughs> was a thrill, right? Absolutely. You yeah. didn't have car rides. And That's right, yeah. Yeah, you pretty much 
probably didn't have access to horses other than in no, that way. No, no. It was just the bus and the train right, and yeah. walking. Did well, you the horse, have... Sorry, the horses were out in the country and since you didn't have a car, if you wanted to go to the country, you took a bus. Okay. And you got to the end of the line and walked for a bit and got out into the country. And did you have a bicycle growing up? No, well, I, my first bicycle, I was age 13, I think it was, before I got my first bike. Because if a toy truck was expensive, I'm yeah. sure that a bicycle so must the bike was expensive, yeah. But we were, at one place we were evacuated during the war, I was out in the country and I was 10 miles from the school, so I had to get a bike. Mm. But uh, the war was on, and so the bikes were were, ra were ra rationed, and you had to put your name down. And a few months later, they would call you and say, "Yeah, you can buy your bike," and they give you a chit. You could go and buy your bike. Wow! So even if you had the money, you just oh, couldn't go. So you yeah. needed this kind of permission. That's right. So what happened is. Uh, in this village, I was able to borrow a little bike until I could buy one. And then I eventually got one. So it's interesting because when kids today get a bike, it's usually for Christmas, it's kind of a luxury. You talk about what color you have, but for oh, you yeah. it was just utility. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything was expensive. But, um, you know, it's kind of funny when you talk about it. It sounds like a hard life, but when you grow up like that, you don't know any different. I mean, my parents used to glow because they had light, gas light. When they grew up, it was all candles. We only had candles going up to bed, you know. So there was progress. <laughs> well, thank you.